Hello, welcome to Bill's Workbench. I wanted to show you the tools that I use to keep my RC cars running in tip-top shape and assembling them. Well, so let's go through all of the different things that I use. First, we'll start with this one. I use these little hefty boxes and these are where I put all of my parts. I also put my parts in the little uh, plastic bags that seem to come with everything. You get like six of them with everything you buy. But I keep them all separated in the little plastic bags and put them in the little hefty bins. You can get these hefty bins, Walmart, Sam's Club, what have you. And uh, yeah, these are great. The next item is my uh, plier, my craft tools from uh, Tamaya or pliers with little plastic doodads on the end. These are great for holding the shock shafts and things like that. And I can hold them pretty tight without marring them. So that's a nice tool to have. A nice pair of tweezers. These are an expensive pair of tweezers, but I've had these tweezers for a good four or five years now, and they are performing just as well as the day I got them. I do use the cheapy ones from time to time, these guys or the ones with the real pointy ends from time to time. But I find that these bend real easy and, well, I find I have to buy more and more and more of them as I go. This one, I bought the one pair and I'm done. A knife. I use this little knife. I found this after watching um, Adam Savage and showing his tools. This is a knife and it auto loads the next uh, piece. Another thing you should remember is the garbage men, you know, they do that for a living. And if you just throw the blade away in the garbage, it may poke through the garbage bag. So I keep all of my sharps in a sharps container and put them all in here. And when that fills up, I just tape this shut and throw this away. And then I don't have to worry about sticking the poor garbage man or anybody else with my sharps. The next one is a good set of side cutters. You can get a good set and you can get a cheap set. You buy the cheap set, buy a bunch of them because they won't last you as long. But a good one will last quite a while. And this one I've had, probably I've had this as long as I've had these tweezers and they've been really good, but I am very careful what I cut with these. If I'm gonna be cutting something that I think is going to ruin these, I'll use the cheap set. The next is the hex set. I have the full set of these uh, uh, hex drivers. I have them from 0.5 millimeters all the way to 3 millimeters. So 0 0.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. I use the 2.5 and the 0.5 probably the most at this point. You can see the tip hasn't worn very much on these. And I've had these for quite some time. I've had these more than five years longer than this. I also have the nut drivers of the same set as well. And I, I use the, the 7, the 4, and the 5.5 millimeter, the ones I use the most. The T-nut driver thing that comes with every single kit that you buy, I use it from time to time, but not as much as the real one. These, these are good to throw in your toolbox and have with you. Throw like two or three of them in your toolbox lightweight oil for bearings this is the one i use i just happen to have a bunch of this you can use any lightweight oil you don't have to buy the expensive stuff like this is but that's what i use i also have some molly grease that i threw in a syringe and that makes it real easy to apply the grease to the gears i use gorilla glue from time to time when i strip out screws in the plastic of my RC cars, which I do from time to time. Gorilla Glue works great for that. Now I don't glue the screw in. I put the Gorilla Glue inside of the hole with a toothpick, let it dry, then I screw it in and it locks in just right. Bondek is my is a good friend of ours. And uh, yeah, I use this quite a bit as well. This is really good for laying wires and things like that where I can't use a zip tie, I'll use Bondic for that. This is a resin and it's not a glue, it's more of a bonding agent, but you um, bond it with uh, ultraviolet light. So it's, 
it is really good at what it does. It does not do good if it can't see the light. You got to use a lot of it if you're going to use it for like a glue. So you don't do that. I just use it to dab over top of wires, make sure that it connects well with the plastic. The next thing I use a lot is this pinion puller. I did not think I would use the pinion puller as much as I use it, but I use it quite a bit. Get yourself a pinion puller. That's a cheapy one. The uh, shock wrench I use quite a bit, and this part of the shock wrench is what I use to pop out the um, little whatever they're called from the whatever they're called in the shocks. Here's a demo on how that works. A long small screwdriver i got this at the home depots you can get them anywhere but a long flathead screwdriver this is really good for getting into those tight to reach spots and prying something out of there this great planes easy touch hand sander i have had this thing probably 20 years and it's wonderful it's just a sander and it's flat you can get these on the amazons as well Trying to find the Great Plains ones is difficult because they don't make them anymore, but they do make some sort of skin. one that's like this, I hope. Picks. I got these picks at the Harbor Freight, and uh, they've been great. I use them to clean out things and pick around at stuff. A good set of files. I went with a good set of files this time instead of the cheapy ones, and I haven't looked back. These have been a great set of files. The soldering iron. I uh, recently converted from a uh, Weller soldering iron, soldering station, to this TS-101. And this thing is awesome. This is a great little soldering iron. I use a 20-watt USB-C power supply with it. And it heats up just fine for the stuff that I do. Which is radio control car stuff the same as you probably do. Heats up to 300 degrees in about 30 seconds. I'm ready to get soldering. I haven't had a problem with it. It has been great. Silicone wire. I have converted everything that I wire myself these days to silicone wire and the sheathing is silicone why because i can strip it with just my fingernail so i can grab the wire strip it off look at that the wire is stripped it is wonderful i don't have to use wire strippers with silicone wire get yourself some silicone wire you'll thank me get yourself some good solder this is 60 40 60 percent 10 40 percent lead yeah, well, it's bad for you and all that other stuff, but it solders well and it does a good job. I have this tip cleaner as well. This is new to me. I just started using these. And boy, where, have I, where has this been all my life? You just stick it in, clean the tip, and you're done. No more sponge getting the tip of the soldering iron cold. So yeah, it's wonderful. It's great. Scissors. Get yourself a very good set of scissors and you won't look back. Yeah, you know the problems you've had with scissors. These scissors, oh, I don't have any problems cutting anything open with these scissors. These are carbide blades and they're just awesome. Yes, they're expensive, but they are awesome. Um, Sharpies. Time to time you need to Sharpie something. Well, throw a sharpie in your toolkit and finally little baby wrenches i can't tell you how often i've used these little baby wrenches and i have them from four millimeters all the way up to 10 millimeters including some that are 0.5 like 4.5 and 5.5 yeah they come in handy all the time i use those wrenches a lot more than i thought i would and finally a good set of screws so you want to get some screws and I have M2s and M2.5s and also some M3s. They are you can get screws in either the black or the stainless steel. Advantages and disadvantages of both. The advantages to the stainless steel ones, they don't rust. The disadvantage to the stainless steel ones is they're not magnetic and so your nut driver if it's magnetic they don't stick to the end like they do on the black ones. So if you need the magnetic, get the black ones and live with a little rust here and there. If you don't want rust, get these. This has been a great little set. I'm very happy with this set. These are called a 
button tops. That's because they look like they have a button on the top. You can see there. They also have cap head, and this is what a cap head looks like. You can get them in two, 2.5, and 3 millimeters. I recommend you get a little set of all three. Don't get the set that has all three. Get a M2 set, an M2.5 set, and an M3 set because you will get just a small amount of different sizes. This has a bunch of different sizes, which is worth getting this. I use uh, gloves all the time. This is when I'm working on the transmissions and it's going to be greasy. I'll use the um, the rubber gloves or whatever these gloves are called. I get them at the Harbor Freights. They're in it. They're used to be a lot less expensive now than they were, but they're not bad. You don't need to get the big thick ones. Get the real thin ones. They're fine. Finally, on the list is this guy. This is a top-notch screwdriver set. And you probably have seen the screwdriver in the channel I've used from time to time. This has been great. I like this screwdriver set. It has all the different nubbins that you would ever need. And you can also purchase an additional handle for it as well. So all of the different Phillips sizes and hex sizes and all that other stuff. I like this set quite a bit. It goes all the way down to 0.9 millimeter, which is the one you're going to use on those Orlando Hunters if you're going to get involved in that. It goes all the way up to uh, 4 millimeter or 3 millimeters in size. So those are the, the hex sizes. Yeah, get this set. It's great. The handle is top notch as well. Here's the secret thing I found on this handle that I just found the other day. You're like, where has this been all my life? It pops out when you pull that. Isn't that just the coolest thing ever? And it stays out. You gotta pull this down and then it goes in. The tips stay in very, very well. You gotta lift that up and, and pull them out. And then you can just lift that and push the tips in and away you go. And you're off and doing all of the screwing up that you need to do with this screwdriver. What's the downside of, of this? Well, the downside is that this is a proprietary bit. But I haven't lost one. They haven't worn out yet. It's about three years old. I'm happy with it. The other thing that I use is the Wera set. And that is right here. And I use this set because I thought it would be cool. And I bought this set. But this handle sucks. So what I use these for is just the bits. I use the long bits because I have this set. And so the bits, uh, is the one. these are the ones I use. I put some green tape around the one I use the most, which is the 2.5. And there it is. And then my Proxons. You probably have seen my Proxon videos. If not, you can look for those on my list. But here is the Proxon that I use the most. This is the screwdriver from Proxon. It is the MIS-1. I use this the most. I use it for a drill. I use it for screwing things in. It's got a clutch on it and I have the clutch set to one. When I screw things in into plastic, I will lightly hold it. You press down this button and it goes in. You press this button, it goes out. I mean, in, out, in, out. I mean, come on easy. You just do a light hold on it and when it starts to twist in your hand that's when it's done and tight enough. So yeah this is the Proxon that I use the most. I don't use it every day but I probably use it once or twice a month. I do have the the rotary tool as well. I've already gone through a motor on this because I've used it to do my um, my matchbox and the Hot Wheels stuff with the brush end on it. And I put the uh, the chuck on there, which makes it real easy to chain at, change out between the Proxon uh, tools and the Dremel tools. The Dremel tools are a little bit wider shaft on there, a thicker shaft than the Proxon. The Proxon is a little thinner shaft. So that makes it easy to change out. I don't have to change it out in the collet. Well worth that upgrade as well. 
So there you have it. These are the tools I use when building my RC cars. Yes, I have a lot more tools than that on the bench. As you can see in this photograph, I have a crap load of tools. But these are the ones that I reach and grab the most. If you are on a budget, you can get a set with these in it. And it'll, and it'll have the cutters and all that other stuff. I'll have a link to that set. I haven't bought that set. I've bought these all individually. So I don't know if that set is any good or not. But I do know that these are. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something in this video. I hope you saw something that you like. I have all the affiliate links down below in the description. You don't pay any more. You don't pay any less on the Amazons. It's the same price, but it does help out the channel. So thanks for watching. Have that great day that you so deserve.